can show the love of Jesus when dealing with fundy atheists. You need to show them how attractive God is and listen to their grievances. You don't represent God that way, and Satan is using you to make Christians look bad. Remember, it's not done in the name of poning atheists. Uh, yeah, thanks, but sorry, you're wrong. Sometimes it is about the ponage, and it takes some clues about the social world of the New Testament to see that. Sometime back we did a social concepts vid about honor and shame, and how in the biblical world honor was of such great importance. A technical term used for this type of society is agonistic, a word which in itself implies a sort of contest. In the New Testament world, life was a sort of ongoing contest to strive for honor, and to see who could get the most of it. Now in many ways, Jesus did overturn or reject this whole honor contest thing, but not in every way. His main concern was to be sure that honor went to the one who deserved it most, namely God the Father. And although modern people don't realize it, Jesus frequently vied for the honor of the Father, and by extension his own honor, against his ideological opponents. And when that happened, it was definitely all about the ponage. Every time Jesus was confronted by the Pharisees, they had one purpose in mind, and that was to show him up and shame him. Their main way of doing that was to pose to him what they thought were big-time theological stumpers. The idea being, hey, we'll ask this backwards hick a question and make him stumble all over himself, which will shame him and make him look bad. To put it in modern terms, yeah, they were after ponage. But here's the kicker. Every time Jesus answered them correctly, which by the thinking of the Pharisees, a dumb hick like Jesus shouldn't be able to do at all. Jesus got the ponage. He won honor in the eyes of those watching, and the Pharisees lost it. Heh, <laughs> little did they know that Jesus had divine knowledge available in his corner and was smarter than all of them put together. Yes, that's the way it was. These talks between Jesus and the Pharisees weren't dialogue or discussion or anything like that. They were public contests of honor, and when that happened, someone was going to get pwned. One more thing about these honor contests. They revolve not just around the question and answer, but also how artfully you responded. This could mean using outright insults like these, or coming up with clever repartee that's only subtly insulted your opponent. Take this verse for example. It might not seem like a big deal, but you have to keep in mind that the Pharisees were the scholars of the day. Asking them if they've read the scriptures would be like going up to Albert Einstein and asking him if he'd found the time to study basic math yet. As a final note of interest, when honor contests like these happened, one easy way to lose was to take it to a physical level, because it showed that you weren't competent to win the contest on verbal terms. So what's that mean for today? Well, although we're not an honor-based society, it's clear that there are situations where we can say, yeah, it is about the ponage, particularly where the honor of God and His truth is concerned. With places like YouTube or certain forums, where you have a whole bunch of fundy atheists or even ignorant fundies like these who don't care a lick about honest discussion or education, or willfully spread misinformation and refuse correction, then yeah, it's ponage time if you're up for it. In contrast, when you're dealing with more reasonable atheists, like these, ponage had better be the last thing on your mind. So there you go. Sometimes, it really is about the ponage. Scripture to say anything you wanted to. Repent, you scumbag, modern day Pharisee jerk. Ah, oh, shut up, you hypocrite.